occluded, not occluded, occluded, not occluded, occluded. Let's talk about occlusive agents in skincare. Well, the term occlusive or occlusive agents, when you're seeing that referred to in skincare, it basically means an ingredient that forms a film over the skin. When that ingredient forms a film over the skin, it prevents transepidermal water loss, T-E-W-L. So when you prevent that water loss, you force water into the stratum corneum because our bodies are unique and amazing and it's always trying to keep us in check and in balance and it's letting go of some of our internal water. And when we stop that, we force hydration into the stratum corneum. Scientifically what happens is that we actually force water into the corneocytes and they swell. Occlusion also promotes water uptake into the intercellular lipid bilayer. Pretty cool and sciencey. So what does that mean? That your skin becomes more hydrated. And we know that one of the secrets to having beautiful skin is having hydrated skin. And the only way that you hydrate skin is with water. Now, let's talk about some occlusive agents and then we're gonna jump into some science and then some interesting theories on skin occlusion. Okay, so some examples of occlusive agents are waxes, like beeswax and candelia wax, oils, like mineral oil, olive oil, castor oil, jojoba oil, petroleum jelly is one of the number one things that people cite when they're talking about occlusive agents, allantoin, silicones like dimethicone, paraffin wax, have you ever gotten a pedicure where you only wanted the $30 pedicure but they upsold you to the $50 pedicure and then they dipped your feet in that paraffin wax and when your feet came out they just looked like gorgeous and amazing? Mm -hmm. That's an occlusive agent. Now this study, occlusion versus skin barrier, talked about some really interesting things. First, a healthy stratum corneum has about 10 to 20% water content. Now, when you use an occlusive agent, you can increase that skin hydration, that stratum corneum hydration up to 50%. And it actually doesn't take very much time. At around the 30 minute mark of skin occlusion, you actually start to see significant hydration changes in the stratum corneum. Occlusive agents left on for up to 24 hours actually start to show morphological changes in the cells. Quickly, let's take a look at some products. Here's the Josh Rosebrook Advanced Hydrating Mask. This is packed with mango butter, shea butter, and it also has, oh, it smells so good like blue tansy. It also has candelia wax in it. So take a look at what this looks like on the skin. No water is getting in that mask to your skin. You see that barrier that it created and no water is getting out. That means that leaving on a mask like this for 30 minutes is actually really going to produce um, skin hydration because you've occluded and blocked off that TEWL. Let's look at this Wamisa mask. This is a hydrogel mask. This is the exact same thing where you put this gel mask on, it's going to firm up to your skin and it's going to prevent that TEWL, thereby increasing hydration in, two, in a twofold manner. One by the essences and aloe vera that the mask contains and the other by holding in that TEWL. I wanted to point out this interesting article written by Frances Child. She was talking about a beauty guru from Japan. Her name is Shizu Saiki. And um, she was talking about the book she wrote called The Japanese Skincare Revolution. It came out in 2015. If you are a, um, you know, Asian skincare buff, you might have heard about it. But this lady, Frances Child, which is a UK newspaper writer, she um, went through this woman's kind of home step-by-step -step occlusive facial mask routine, which involved you basically wrapping your face in saran wrap. The saran wrap held the, um, hu the heat and humidity in and caused your skin to have an increased skin hydration. I'm gonna link that article below. Take a read, it's super short, she's got great pictures, um, but it, it's food for thought. I, I don't recommend using saran wrap just because 
that's a very occlusive agent. That's a suffocating agent. <laughs> you could not, you could, I don't know what could happen, but I'm not going to recommend you wrap saran wrap on your face on YouTube. Um, but the idea, the concept is the same, that occlusive agents are going to increase your skin hydration. This woman, Frances Child, at the end of the article, she was like, um, yeah, I'm sold. My skin looked amazing. That leads us to sheet masks. Sheet masks are everywhere. That is a great, super inexpensive way to increase your skin hydration. So like everything, we can overdo it. Um, when you are repeatedly using uh, occlusive agents for long periods of time, you can get in there and mess around with your skin. Going back to this study, when you are overdoing the occlusive agents, and I'm talking about much more than using a face mask, a hydrogel face mask, but you can just, in some food for thought, you can mess with your skin's pH, which in turn affects ceramide production. You can mess with your epidermal lipids, your sweat glands, your skin morphology, and it even listed a few other things. I didn't go into that too much because I really don't see the risk of us using a hydrogel face mask or an advanced hydration mask. Um, and usually when you find occlusive agents, you're not gonna find them alone. Most of us aren't rubbing petroleum jelly just straight on our face. So um, if you were doing that, then maybe we would go into more of the side effects of um, overuse of occlusive agents, but oftentimes you're gonna see them mixed with humectants and emollients that we talked about the past two weeks. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Can't wait to draw this winner for you guys. I can't wait. It has about 10 to 20 percent water contact has about 10 to 20% water content. Content. It came out in 2000. It came out in 2000. Basically means ingredients that form a light film over the skin. I've been occluded.